Hey guys, how's it going? So I've not been able to make a video for a while. I've just been... I know I've got a bit carried away with all my uh, designing and all the stuff I've been making. And I always just forget. I mean, I'm just terrible for it, really. Uh, I should document everything that I do a little bit more, because I do so much cool stuff. And I don't know. Anyway, here it is now. Anyway, I'll spin the camera around so that you can get a good look. This is part two for the pick and, pay, pick and place machine. And uh, it, it's like a completely different thing now. So we've got uh, new posts, mountain, because obviously there were just posts when I showed you last time. No belts, no motors, nothing. Uh, this is the head design. Uh, instead of using all those other step motors, if you remember, and football pumps, I'm now using these little syringes with uh, suction cups at the end. They're so much more accurate and literally, I think they're a bit cheaper as well. And now for these Z motors here, we've got uh, floppy drive. These out of old floppy drives. Little uh, carriages. And uh, yeah, this is the head. This is... I, oh god, it took me absolutely ages to come up with an idea to get six heads in one. If I just flip you around the other side... Sorry about the lens cap. Uh, you can see that there's another three here. I took one off for testing because I actually designed a new head. This is the second version. This one actually kind of looks like a face. So that's my first version of the head. Now I'm already on a second version. That takes about 10 hours to print. And, uh, don't know what to do about this blooming lens cap. There. And, uh, end stops go in here so that it's self aware of how close it is to the edge. This one isn't, so it crashes a lot. Well, actually, no, if you set it up right, it doesn't. So I'll just put the shot back over. But yeah, if you look over here, we've got the uh, drive for the y-axis. So this is our y-axis here. It moves along these bars. And as you can see, this turns the belt down here. And if we come back over here, we've got a symmetrical one. And then the motor turns this bar, and you can see it moves. And then put that cap back on the head. We've got our X. So that's all nice, and it just fits there. That's the zero point. And then I just got a test wire for one of these motors. But I'll try and get a better shot. See, they're all on there. It's a really sleek design. And if we come over here, this is uh, one of the coolest things I've designed for it. We've got a Raspberry Pi 8 inch screen that uh, talks to this whole setup. So you can see I've designed a little Python program here that will control it. And uh, if we go in here, I hate recording screens, but you've got some buttons that will make it draw a square, diagonal, or circle. And there's test, home, and update. And then there's also a slider for each of the Zs, but I've not done any of the electronics for that yet. And if we come over here, you can set the port and board rate. And then the idea is that there'll be uh, board, settings, page setup, head location, and control. So head location, it will give you a real-time view of what's going on. And anyway, I'm going to put the camera back over here, and we'll try and make it move. So I'll just run the test program, and you can see it all in action. So this is about a half meter by half meter square, and then here's the circle it draws, coolest one I've all. And if I uh, use the sliders, I can set absolute points, so I can just set, send it coordinates, and it will put the head there, and say if I want it to go somewhere else, you know, you just set the coordinates, and this is the whole piece of software 
all of the stuff on this Raspberry Pi will uh, convert comma separated values, so that's basically what you use to store the position of components on circuit boards along with the uh, where the actual components are in the trays. So comma separated values uh, will be fed into here and it will then operate the vacuums and the heads to pick up parts and move them around and then it will put them on the solder paste pads ready to be soldered on. And if I hit home, it'll just it does it by zero zero at the minute because I've got no end stops, so you just have to make sure. Say if I started it on here, if I moved it, it thinks that that's zero right now. So if I press home, it thinks that's zero because there's no end stops. And if I put it to, say, ten, and then if I home it now, it's only counting the amount of steps these are. So these are step motors so that you step them by so much of a degree by pulsing coils and it just counts, well it knows because it's controlling them how many steps one motor is doing so by doing that you can just calculate how much travel you're getting if you know the uh, pulley, you know all the calculations for the pulleys on how much they turn uh, proportional to how much distance the carriage moves and stuff like that so until I get these uh, end stops on you just have to uh, tell it where zero is so if I put it here to zero and then home it now it's uh, home to zero, and then I can put it to its extremities. Like that, and I can just move it anywhere I want now. So it's pretty cool, and then home it. And then if I wanted to, I could just draw a circle. So, one thing with this is, with a pick and place machine, so that's for making circuit boards and stuff like that, you need speed, that's the whole idea. You want, you want to be able to put your circuit boards together really quick. And I have got the feed rate adjustable here. So that's, the feed rate is just uh, how quickly the motors are turning. So it's basically how many millimeters it moves per minute. And at the minute we're, I've just bumped it up to 300,000 millimeters per minute, so that's fairly fast. And if I update the Y, that's pretty fast. But if I try and move in a diagonal, so that's both modes are being operated by the single processor, the Arduino processor. Do you see that skip at the end? That's because the processor is struggling. I believe it's because the processor is struggling to pulse the motors evenly. It always seems to happen at the end, though. But if you lower the speed just on the, I worked at the edge point, which is uh, 175,000 mill millimeters per minute, and it doesn't quite stall at that point. See, and that's about as fast as I can move with this slower processor. The reason that is, is because with step motors, you've got to pulse the coils to move them. So the processor is always pulsing these coils if you're seeing movement. And if you're doing diagonals and complex patterns, you've got to pulse two sets of coils on and off. And inside each motor, there's two sets that have got to go on and off. And inside this one, there's two sets that have got to go on and off. So if you want that speed, you've got to be able to pulse them a lot faster. And this uh, processor is 16 megahertz, which is nowhere near fast enough if you want to do really high speed pick and place. Um, it is quite fast in terms of what you can do. I mean, the amount of pulsing you're having to do just to get this speed is phenomenal. I mean, just to do something like that, you're talking thousands of thousands of pulses in that short time. Uh, well, even more than that, you know, absolutely hundreds of thousands. It's just crazy amount. And if you want to uh, get a really fast picking place machine, you'd probably need to change these belts out for a screw thread. And, uh, you know, you'd want to have a lot faster processor so you can get that timing correct so that you're not going to have your steps going on and off because if you lose a step like that just there if I show you and you skip a step you've completely lost your whole positioning system so you've just lost about 10 millimeters of accuracy right there so you're going to put components everywhere so you really need something that can keep up with how f you need a processor that's fast enough to uh, keep up with the speed that you're trying to run the motors at now if we actually flip around just so happens I've got my 3D printer running and I actually also built a uh, camera mount, so we can see the head print actually now. 
and uh, you basically just hook GoPro mounts in here and I've just got one here and a GoPro sits in there and it just takes picture every 20 seconds and uh, you know puts them together I've actually cleaned up the 3d printer a lot and I've made this uh, little box for a screen tells you about the print and stuff and just in general it's all really tidied up and a lot neater but anyway what I was gonna say is as a lot of people know uh, Arduinos also control 3D printers. Well, the majority are open source ones anyway. And this one runs at 16 megahertz also. But if you look at how fast the 3D printer runs in comparison to a, uh, a pick and place, the pick and place machine, what I'd like to, to get it running at, uh, you're talking a lot slower speed. So that's why you can get away with using a uh, fairly low power processor on a 3D printer compared to a pick and place machine. Uh, you just don't need that same speed that you can uh, that you want to achieve over here so I'll probably leave it there for this video I really want to uh, I'll probably do a video of when I put this new head on because it's gonna be a pretty big job maybe a little time-lapse or something but uh, as you can see just on the whole the uh, the 3d printer is going uh, picking place is going really nicely um, it's progressed a lot since my last video, and I'm sorry that I've not really documented it. I'll try and get some better shots quickly. Um, but yeah, just on the whole, as so you can see there's some bearings for the belts back here. On the whole, it's just progressed really nicely. And, uh, you know, I'm just really happy with it. So yeah, I'll see you in my next video, and I'd love it if you could subscribe or like this video. It really helps me out, and I'll see you around.